welcome back to another Farns' free time. Today we are going to be discussing overhangs. In overhangs, we can really discuss overhangs for hours, but I do not want to spend that much time on it because really it's a boring topic. All right, so overhangs are anything that's printed flatly here, you see right here, is an overhang and that may or may not need supports. In my experimenting later in this video, I utilize this model right here. It's very simple. Uh, you can utilize it to calibrate your printer. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour and 10 minutes, uh, depending on your printer settings. And it's a fantastic model to, to utilize, right? As you can see, it goes up to 75 degrees. Boom, right there, all right? Which is a pretty steep angle to print without sports. Uh, most machines, or most times, you will not want to print uh, at that without some type of support, uh, depending, depending on where, what, what you're printing. If you're doing like a three day print, I would definitely recommend support. But we'll get into that later. Um, we want to discuss a few things before we get into it. Uh, one is a general rule of thumb, which is the 45 degree rule. The 45 degree rule, it basically states that Anything below 45 degrees should print cleanly and anything above may or may not need supports. And I say may or may not need supports uh, because some things won't and some things will. All right, that's just, that's just the bottom line, All right? The next couple things that we want to talk about is, is first uh, printer calibration. Um, was kit printer calibration? It's basically, knowing your printer, knowing that it's set up correctly, and understanding that it can print overhangs. Uh, you don't wanna pull your printer out of the box, assemble it, and be like, I'm gonna print something with a ton of overhangs. Because if you're new to 3D printing, unless you really know what you're doing, um, that's probably not gonna end up very well for you, and you're probably gonna get frustrated. So, bottom line is, uh, printer calibration, know, know what it is, know what's going on with it and understand that uh, 3D printing is uh, mostly trial and error. There's no, some machines, even though they may be the same brand, same make, uh, operate different, all right? The next thing that we want to discuss is uh, filament here, all right? So filaments are kind of a tricky thing and everyone has their own preference. Um, but the main thing that you want to pay attention to with filaments is is that you know the filaments that you're using. So don't start a 3D print with a new color or something that you've never printed with before uh, because it, it may end badly. It may not either. So, you know, if you want to, great, try it. Um, otherwise, it, it, it may not end very well for you. Uh, and you may find out, you know, some tough, some tough lessons during that. Um, the bottom line with filament though is that filament can be, be a very tricky thing. If you uh, normally print with white and you switch to something like red or blue, you may find that the, the settings completely change um, and as will your overhang settings. Um, and the bottom line with printer filament is you want to make sure that it's dry before you start printing, especially if you're printing overhangs because it can wreak havoc on your prints, meaning that you may end up trying to chase a problem that you're like, oh, maybe it's my nozzle, maybe it's my extruder, maybe it's this, that. You may end up chasing a wild goose when it's as simple as your, your prayer filament is is wet or, or has soaked up some moisture. And most FDM uh, printing filaments are what you call uh, hygroscopic, which means that they like moisture. So if you have a place like the basement here, or if you live in a humid climate and you have your stuff in the garage, um, they like to soak up moisture. And if they soak up moisture in them, I, I mean, it will it will wreck your prints. It won't make for fun printing and you'll probably be like, oh man, what the hell's going on? All right, so that being said, we're gonna go into the tips and tricks, all right? Moving into the tips. All right, we're moving into the actual tips now. For our actual tips, there are five things that we wanna pay attention to. Number one, is our wall count. That is the wall count of the outer shell of your object, right? Number two is orientation. When we're talking orientation, we're talking adjusting it to either avoid or reduce those overhangs. Number three is adjusting layer height. Maybe you're printing at 0.28, so like a rough 
print or maybe you're printing at 0.2 millimeter which is the most common and bring it down to uh, 0.16 right or, or number four any combination of one two or three and number five being the most obvious one is just using supports all right so without further ado let's get to printing and let's get to some examples all right, this is gonna be our control print. Across the board, everything's gonna have a 20% infill. I'm gonna go up into my settings and I'm gonna check two things. One is my wall count, which is right here. And it's 0.8 millimeter wall thickness and two wall count. So it's two outer layers. All right, so here's the first print right here. Print number one, we didn't do anything at a two wall layer count. And as you can see, we have a little bit of sagging right there. All right, otherwise it, it turned out pretty good. You know, I'm pretty satisfactory. I mean, those are not the best, but they look all right. Let's move on to the next one. All right, for print two, we are gonna change only two settings. So we're gonna go up here. We are going to change, really it's only one setting. You're just going to change your wall thickness to point or 1.2 millimeters. That changes it to three wall count. Let's do it. All right, that sagging has dramatically improved. Look at that, that is way better. All right, so that's just by changing the wall count, nothing else. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, we are on print three. For print three, just verify that wall count. We are at 1.2, three wall count, and we're going and we're gonna start having some fun with it. We are gonna change the orientation. I'm gonna change the orientation to somewhere around 50 degrees. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I know I can print that. It's right about there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, the ring there. All right, and we're gonna add some supports. And I'm using custom supports with a 10 millimeter base. I'm adding three supports, and I'm also gonna add a raft. I, you guys didn't see that. Um, I'm gonna add a raft for uh, bed adhesion, and that looks good. All right, I'm gonna slice it up here. Hour and eight minutes. Let's print it. Print three, look at that. That is probably the prettiest that we have gotten so far in those numbers. It is nice and clean numbers. We changed that orientation. Little to no sagging. We got some issues right here on those points, but if it's the bottom of your print, it's probably, probably a good place to have it, yeah? So overall, I really like print number three, all right? Let's move on to print number four. All right, for print four, we are going to change from standard quality to dyna dynamic quality. So from 0.2 millimeters to 0.16 millimeters. We're gonna keep the walls the same. So 1.2 millimeter wall thickness. We're gonna change our build plate adhesion, which I already did, from wrap to skirt and slice it up here. One hour, 15 minutes, so it does increase that time, but I think we might get some pretty good results. Let's print it. All right, our fourth print. So we printed in dynamic quality, all right? So a one point, or point, one six millimeter layer height. So much finer, takes a lot more time. Now, overall, now we have some issues here and you know what, that looks like it could be something that I need to adjust and it looks like a little sagging too. So, this does look better. I mean, look at that bottom. That bottom is, man, man that bed adhesion is crazy, crazy clean. Crazy, crazy clean. Compared to these first ones, look at that first one. Man, that's pretty amazing right there. All right, I haven't really changed anything but the sayings, but 
This did turn out pretty good. Those numbers are nice and clean. I still think that the number three is uh, it's a little bit better. Yeah, it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, but we have that sagging issue. So, not little to no improvement maybe. There's there's some pros and cons, some, some takeaways to it. Um, let's move on to the fifth print, which we're gonna common or combine all of these into kind of one print, all right? All right, print five, which I've already rotated into position here. I'm gonna add supports here. So what we're doing here is we're running dynamic quality, same wall count, same infill, adding these supports here. We're changing that orientation. So a combination of all of the steps that we have done prior in our prints. Right, we're gonna make sure that our build plate adhesion here is switched to raft, so that way we have a little support here. We're gonna slice it up. Whew, an hour and 48 minutes, quite a bit. Let's do it. All right, wrap it up. Print number five, where this was a combination of everything that we've done before. So that means we had increased wall count, we had a change of orientation where we utilized supports and we used dynamic quality, which was a 0.16 layer height. And honestly, it did not turn out that good. I mean, look at these, these are, there's definitely some problems with those, right? It did not turn out that great, right? If I were going to choose either of them, I would probably, I would actually probably choose number three so number three is where we changed not only the wall count, but we also changed the orientation and utilized supports. This was by far probably the best print out of this little experiment right here. Look at that, there's no sagging. The numbers all look pretty clean, right? Those layer heights are nice. There's a little issues with those little points right there. Uh, but other than that, that is really a fantastic print where this one, it's a little, it's good, but it had some problem there. So not sure what that's about. Overall, number three, changing orientation and a standard height would be my vote. Hopefully this helps you conquer those overhangs in the future. That's it for today. Hopefully these tips and tricks help. And if you have something else that you would like to add or for me to discuss or go into, please let me know in the comments below. And if there is any other tips and tricks that you would like to see in the future, let me know so that way I can get on that. I'll see you guys next time.